Hi, I'm Paige Pradko. Welcome to Therapy for a Better Life. You know, today I'm feeling a lot of heart palpitations, just like skipped beats and, you know, kind of pressure on my chest. I'm just going to just take my pulse real quick. What is this lump right here? You know, does that look normal to you? I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm feeling like, just honestly, like some tingling in my face right now. A little bit dizzy. You think I should go to the ER? You know, better safe than sorry, right? You think I should go? Now, I don't mean to be making fun. Health anxiety is no fun. Health anxiety really takes away people's ability to live their life fully, you know, to enjoy their life. This is the first of a two-part series talking about health anxiety. In this first part, I'm going to explain, describe a little bit about what health anxiety is. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about treating health anxiety and what I have found works the best in treating my clients with health anxiety. But first of all, you know, what is health anxiety? Well, it is persistent, obsessive, intrusive thoughts and fears that something is very wrong with us. It's not just a little passing worry. It's really, they're very serious concerns. And they lead to reassurance seeking, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But really when some people, when they feel this body sensation, their brain misinterprets it and misinterprets it as danger. And then they're just flooded with anxiety symptoms. So there are two uh, distinct types of health anxiety. The first is called somatic symptom disorder, and the second is called illness anxiety disorder. So somatic symptom disorder is what I've just briefly described, where you feel a body sensation and you misinterpret it as something very, very dangerous. And then the amygdala gets activated, fear goes off, and we get all the terrible anxiety symptoms. Now, illness anxiety disorder is not so much the feeling of body sensations. You might feel a little bit, um, but it is more thought controlled. It's more starts with these obsessive worries about possible illnesses that, that you can have. And again, it's just as terrible. The fear center gets activated and all the anxiety symptoms go off. So this is classified as an anxiety disorder, but I believe it behaves much more like OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. And let me explain why. Obsessive compulsive disorder, we have uh, these obsessive intrusive thoughts that just don't go away. And they are reinforced by compulsive behaviors. So what are compulsive behaviors with health anxiety? Well, there's several. First of all, there's reassurance seeking. This is probably the most common. Reassurance seeking takes form in many ways. It can take the form of um, seeking out medical professionals, uh, having different diagnostic tests, different things that you're looking to reduce your anxiety, but some kind of definitive proof, certainty that nothing is wrong with you. The only problem here is that the, it, it takes away the anxiety for the moment. You get a test, oh look, your heart is great. Nothing to be worried about. Oh, thank goodness, anxiety comes down, but the next time you feel heart palpitations, boom, there goes the anxiety again. Because that test didn't give me absolute certainty for this moment, right? It was only that moment. People with anxiety have difficulty with tolerating uncertainty. And so we do this reassurance seeking and it, it only seems to work for a moment. And then it reinforces the anxiety. When the anxiety comes back again, the fear center goes off. 
Other types of reassurance seeking include seeking reassurance from friends and family, sometimes complete strangers. We want reassurance. Again, we're trying to get certainty that nothing is wrong with us. Um, and also we, uh, we might do this kind of searching, researching obsessively on the internet. Again, we're looking for some kind of proof that nothing's wrong with us. It only works for a moment and we're actually reinforcing the anxiety by that behavior. And even though our anxiety drops at the moment, it comes back again and there we are again searching the internet. Um, another type of compulsive behavior is continually checking body status. So this takes different forms depending on what your fear is. It, it could be continually checking your pulse, you know, checking your heart rate, continually checking your blood pressure, searching for lumps. Again, it takes many different forms. And the third type of compulsive behavior that I see is what I call safety behaviors. You know, finding out where is the local, uh, the local ER. Anytime I go anywhere, I have to know where that ER is in case I need an emergency visit. Um, looking at the nearest exit sign at all time, I have to be able to, you know, I better sit close to the exit so I can get out in a hurry. Maybe having a safety person along with us, and that safety person may have to save us at any particular moment. Um, carrying different medical devices. Uh, or medication that can um, save us in a hurry uh, or check on our body status at all. Um, so these are all, you know, safety behaviors. They all reinforce this false belief that something is terribly wrong with us. Um, there's one other uh, item that I would like to, to bring up as well. And that is there's something called secondary gain. It's an unconscious uh, thing that happens to us, but when medical professionals and our loved ones are giving us extra care, extra attention and love, uh, doing things to pamper us, it is reinforcing our anxiety. It's called secondary gain. We're not doing it on purpose. It's very unconscious, but it happens. Somebody treats us really kind because uh, we're having all of these symptoms. Uh, you know, unbeknownst to us, it is reinforcing that health anxiety. Just something to be aware of. Now in the next video, uh, I'm going to talk about what to do about it. What are some of the best techniques to treat health anxiety? And if you'd like to see that video, be sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you can catch that video when it goes live. And please leave me some comments or questions and I'd be very happy to answer anything that you'd, um, uh, any question you might have about health anxiety or, and I'm also interested in what you have to share and how, how you have been um, dealing with it in your life. Uh, so uh, I hope that you learned a little bit today about health anxiety and uh, until um, next session, I hope that you uh, are doing well and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.